Hi there, my name is Trolls and welcome to SoundPaint. In this video, I'm gonna go deep in and answer a frequent question we've gotten lately in regards to ultra deep sampling. Why do you have two different versions of many of your libraries? As you may know in SoundPaint, we have a variety of libraries that come in two different editions. We have a UDS edition that stands for ultra deep sampling. And then we have a standard edition, which is where we are with traditional deep sampling today. And when you buy either edition, you get exactly the same programs and exactly the same parts. So What's the difference? Why do I pay twice as much for a UDS edition? Well, that's what we're gonna cover in this video here. The best way of describing it is almost like if I say the same sentence right now, I'll digitally copy paste the very sentence so you can hear what happens when we get what I call the machine gun effect. And then after that, I'm just gonna say it fluently as a human being because it's actually the exact difference between ultra deep sample libraries and standard deep sample libraries. So for example, if I say, Mary had a little lamb, 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 your brain immediately picks up that I've been copy pasting that very clip over and over. But if I say, Mary had a little lamb, 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 it's never the same. There's too much variation, too many small imperfections. And that's really what ultra deep sampling is about. It's about all the small things. They either may not even pick up upon it when you play it, but when you get inside of the computer and you take these old vintage synthesizers, which I do, and I ultra deep sample them because they're not gonna last forever or you need them repaired every year and they're difficult to use. So for me, I want them all inside of sound paint, but I want them all with their sonic soul completely kept in pristine condition. So I know I have an exact one-to-one -one correlation with the original units. That's what ultra deep sampling is about. But instead of talking about it, let me just give you a variety of examples. I'm not gonna say which one is which. I want you to figure that out. And if you can't hear the difference, then you should totally just buy the standard editions. As I said, there's no difference between them. You get the same programs, you get the same parts. But if you can hear the difference, if you can appreciate the nuance, all the small little non-linear imperfections, then ultra deep sampling might be for you. All right, let me show you what it's all about. Let's get inside of the door here. I got a Jupiter 8 loaded here and I'm gonna play two different examples side by side. See if you can hear the difference. Or, you heard the difference? Let me try one more time here. Or, they're exactly the same, but they're not. One has that sort of static thing going on because it doesn't naturally have all the imperfections and the other example does. Let me play another example here using the same samples here, but just then um, play them on a chord instead. Um, so you can hear this arpeggiation. And one would imagine that arpeggiation is so nuanced that it's hard for the ear to pick up upon it, but try to listen. I mean, to me, that's like two different instruments almost. They don't sound the same. Here's another example of a Juno 60. Let me try um, to take the same patch here and just play it with single notes instead. So if you look down here in the door, we're just gonna play the exact same notes here. So it's almost like the second version is more facey and there is more uniqueness on the attacks as well. Always something happening, it's always alive. Hard to describe, but. All right, here's another example of a Juno 60. See if you can tell the difference. For me, one sings more than the other one. And it's not always that static is bad. It can be used in certain styles of music where you really want that clean pop kind of like vibe. But to me, they're just different beasts. But I do know what beast feeds my musical belly the most. Let me give you another example here. In this case, just playing a noise. You would imagine noise is so like not musical, but check out the difference.
with the old analog units, with acoustic instruments, that's the type of natural variation you constantly get with the instrument is behaving, stuff is going on. It's not just this perfect, like repetitious digital terminator. I mean, to me, that sounds like a sort of shooting effect from an 8-bit video game. Um, it's so static versus Da 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 like it's just alive instead of just going you get the point. Um, let me show you one more example here, and I thought this one was particularly interesting as we talk about the attack of the sound. This is um, just analog clicks. When I was ultra deep sampling the Jupiter 8, I also did analog clicks for all the different oscillators, and you're gonna see the difference here. This is just a tiny click. Really, really different, right? When you listen to the fast one here, machine gun effect versus this, just totally alive and with so much going on. So it's interesting to isolate the sound here because that's the first thing that hits the ear. And that's really how nuanced these old instruments are. Constantly something new. Every time you hit this key, the same freaking key, same velocity, whatever. It's so nuanced and different. Just always those small micro variations. I don't know. For me, it's when the computer gets a heart, I can just feel it in a different way where I'm sort of used to the digital copy paste, which to me is not as musical as. So there you have it. That's the difference between UDS and standard editions. And I don't judge. There's no right or wrong in music. That's a lesson I've learned over the years. You just grab whatever works for you. And the good news is that you never ever have to have sonic FOMO or let your gear acquisition syndrome kick into full gear and sound paint because the price remains the same. So for example, if you bought a standard edition for $20 and you want to upgrade to the UDS version, you're only going to pay the price difference between the two. So if UDS is 40 and the standard is 20, you'll just pay $20 to upgrade. And to wrap it up here, I just want to play you uh, one more thing. Uh, this is a program that Tarek made for me. It's a part of our Juno 60 UDS edition. The program is called This Is For You Trolls and he just hit the sonic nerve. He knows me so well musically. So this is like what I regard as the perfect ARP. And it's essentially four different Juno 60s, all ultra deep sample playing at the same time. What a privilege that we can just stack them up like that. Um, check it out here. Anyway, all my rambles. Thank you so much for watching. And if you made it to this part of the video, which I guess you will only know if you actually watch this right now, thank you so much. 
I am so incredibly honored, and I know the team as well, that you guys are allowing us to explore so deeply and with such passion and madness. Um, who would have known that we would sit and listen to little clicks one day and appreciate them in some kind of decadent way, and yet it makes a difference. Sometimes we need to afford ourselves the luxuries in music. So thank you for watching. See you in the next one.